Welcome everybody. Ryan and Dave here back again with some more fun, great announcements as we head into the fall. Uh, it seems like a good October 13th or Friday the 13th announcement. Oh, it is the 13th, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Sounds spooky. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, today we've, we've launched our new Vision Line steam locomotive, which will be delivering in 2024. Uh, now, this is a type of year, time of year when we've, we've typically done this in the past, um, early October. Uh, show off the locomotive that we'll be featuring in the Volume 1 catalog next year in, in the Vision series. This time we are changing it up a little bit. Uh, the locomotive, rather than just being a preview, this locomotive is available for pre-order right now uh, through Lionel or through your favorite dealer. Uh, we'll be taking orders for about the next month or so, and then the plan is to deliver these probably late second quarter, maybe early summer of 2024. So you'll be getting this locomotive much sooner than you normally would if we held off until the Volume 1 catalog in January to, to take orders. So we've got a lot to talk about today, uh, a really exciting new model with lots of uh, great features. Dave and his team have spent a lot of time working on this to make it as awesome a locomotive as it can be. And uh, let's get started. Yeah. All right. Dave, you want to tell them uh, a little bit about what our locomotive is here? Well, when we started talking about the next vision line locomotive and what we were going to do, Ryan really thought, you know, I don't really care what engine it is. I just want to make Dave's life difficult. And Ryan did a very good job in picking one of the most challenging engines we've done to date. That's right. We've chosen nothing, none other than the Erie's triplex locomotives. Yes. The triplex locomotive. I said the triplex. Yep. Uh, and really a neat piece of history. Uh, there were three of these locomotives built. Uh, the first one came in 1914, uh, and then there were two more in 1916. And one of the nice things that we've done about with, with these models is we have updated the, the tooling uh, so that we've done all the variations of the three different locomotives, uh, of which there were several. And so you'll have accurate numbers and accurate renditions for each of the locomotives. And of course, when we look at the catalog in a little bit here, you'll see we've done some fun fantasy schemes as well uh, for those who might want a big beast of an engine uh, on their layout, but uh, aren't fans of the Erie. Yeah. So we really packed this thing full of features, didn't we, Ryan? Yeah, it, it's a, a big a big locomotive, but it filled up fast. Yes, it did. Uh, we actually tried to even jam more smoke features into it and ran out of real estate. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just happens. Yep, so we got as much in here as we as we could. Um, but let's start with, uh, let's start with the, some of the new features, and I think the, the the newest and most dynamic feature that we've added is actual wheel slip. Yeah, so we, we came out with the wheel slip sound effects with the Vision Big Boy in 2014. Um, and we implemented that sound effect feature um, in many other engines since. Um, but we decided, you know, how cool is it when you see a real engine wheel slip? The crew may not think so, so much, right. but we certainly think it's cool. So we thought, hey, let's let's try and get that feature into a Vision engine. and. We actually had another engine in mind for many years to fit this feature into, but um, this one just lent itself to being the perfect engine for this feature. Um, and, and it even kind of follows the history of the actual locomotive. Um, so the wheel slip feature can be manually triggered by the user, um, and it does happen underneath the tender. And that is a bit more prototypical because one of the issues with these locomotives in real life, Ryan, right, was that mm -hmm. The tender wheels would slip as the fuel and water um, from the tender would be used and you would have less traction, right? Right. I mean, that was the idea behind this massive locomotive in the first place was that the tender was essentially dead weight. Mm -hmm. And so if they could harness the weight of the tender uh, for traction, you would get uh, an even more powerful locomotive. And so this engine could technically pull with about 89% of the engine's weight was uh, and tender's weight was, was essentially on the drivers for tractive effort. Uh, and although there were some valves and, and things done in there to try and minimize the obvious effect of what happens when the tender's not as full anymore, uh, they would still tend to get a little bit uh, light in the back end uh, as, the, as the tender uh, depleted. Um, but also, you know, they simply put the biggest problem was they just couldn't supply enough fuel to or uh, steam to keep all, all six sets of pistons going. Yeah, because this is a, a compound um malay right or steam locomotive right so it would actually take steam into the cylinders that are for the main drivers mm -hmm. um, kind of under the firebox the area mm -hmm. and then one 
one set of the cylinders would send steam forward, the other set would send it backwards to to reuse it, and that's mm -hmm. kind of how it powered. Um, and usually with a Malay, you picture the cylinders being different sizes for the high and low pressure cylinders, but these were all the same size on the outside, just different size valves inside. Yeah, for sure. Which is a, a, an interesting look. Um, but, you know, as we alluded to, the, the tender would tend to slip as you used up fuel, and um, we did that here in this model. So the front locomotive um, is, is essentially a 2880. Uh, it has its own cannon motor um, with encoder and um, revised gearbox. And then the tender itself is a separate locomotive that is just simply married to the front locomotive. Um, and the tender has its own special code to make all the magic happen. So when you <clears throat> trigger the wheel slip effect, um, it already knows, you know, using its um, onboard tack, what speed it's going. Um, and when you trigger the effect, it knows what speed it needs to get going up to. And then it comes back down to the speed that it was going before or the speed to match the front engine. Um, so really this is, you can kind of think of it as a, a married pair of engines um, that just work in harmony to, to work as one engine until you need that wheel slip feature. And of course you can trigger this yourself or it does like the legacy system normally does monitor your, your fuel and everything else and, mm -hmm. uh, and can trigger it automatically. Yeah, we're, we're still working on the different methods for triggering. Um, we, we initially started by triggering it using the AUX3 key. Um, then we got a bit more complex with it. And right now we're triggering the slip effect using the train brake, uh, just like the big boy used for the sound effect. So if you, you know, pull down the train brake, give it some throttle and release the train brake, it'll slip then. Um, and there's other ways it'll do it too, like using the boost button. We'll trigger the wheel slip effect as well at different speeds at the uh, lower momentum levels. Um, so really, uh, those are kind of the paths we've taken and we're still doing other research into when we want the wheels to slip or how much or how we want them to slip. Um, so while we have this um, in condition where I would say people would love it, we're still gonna continue until the code is due to, to try and really take it to the next level like we always do. Um, and, and once we're done you know, blabbering about all this, I can certainly start these up and, and demo the effect too. Absolutely, we're definitely gonna demo all these great features. And if you if you go online to Lionel.com and pull up the Vision Line brochure, uh, you'll be able to actually see all of these things. And I'd like to point out one of the neat things that we can do now with a digital catalog like this is if you go to the third spread, you'll see an overview of the locomotive and you can click on any one of these mini videos and pop up a, a short video to demo the feature on the locomotive. So if you can't see quite well from the view you have here of us today, uh, you can go on Lionel.com and see these anytime and repeat them as often as you'd like uh, on the locomotives. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one thing to note about the wheel slip feature, and I think a lot of people have already commented on it, but um, Lionel engines typically get their traction using the rubber traction tires. Um, obviously on the tender, we wouldn't want this because it would just simply dig into the track. Um, so the tender will not have any traction tires. Um, but both sets of the engines um, on the front locomotive do. So this thing will still pull a really large consist all at once. Um, and during normal operation, the, the engine underneath the tender will still give some traction even without traction tires. Yeah, all the wheels are on the rails. We yes. didn't lift any of the, the drivers. Yes, the, the engine looks, you know, like normal operating conditions. So. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the other uh, smoke and sound features that we've packed into this one? For sure. Uh, the sound is always um, a good feature um, and actually ties back into the wheel slip. And if you don't mind, I'll talk more about that right now is mm -hmm. um, the wheel slip is tied to uh, the locomotive in the back. So the triplex did exhaust the rear side of cylinders out at the back of the tender. I don't know if you could see it in the video, but each one has a, a stack in the back of the tender. And so we did put an OGSU, a smoke unit back there. Um, as well as, as a sound system that's independent from the front. And those are synchronized uh, in time with the locomotive that's underneath the tender. So as the wheels slip, the smoke unit out the back of the tender will go faster, the uh, chuffing sounds will go faster, all you know, timed to the four chuff per revolution in the tender. Um, and, and again, that is all completely independent from the locomotive. So the locomotive will have, you know, obviously its own smoke stack out the front, as well as its own chuff sounds as well. Um, 
these are you know dual sound system locomotives so you have the sound system in the tender and you have the sound system up in the front boiler of the engine uh, each with their own independent chuffing and other sound effects too um, these will have what has become more of our standard now which is the five whistles um, so you'll have you know the main whistle and then the other sound system will have the reverb whistle and uh, same with the um <clears throat> the bell um so these will have various bells, whether they're different pitches or just different bells in general. You do have the five. And as always, you can select through those using the aux one key on the cab. And so that's the great stuff about the sound system. They will have the um, road-specific crew talk, mm -hmm. road number-specific crew talk. Um, and as we'll demo here in a bit, too, we've done an all-new sound set for our Halloween version with all new characters and sound effects. Uh, so fully custom you know, sounds for these locomotives. And of course you do still have the whistle steam in there as well and the swinging bell. Yeah, the, sw the swinging bell is definitely a, a fan favorite. Uh, certainly one of my favorites. Um, you know, it, it is, does, is run by the electric coil that's inside the boiler and it pulls the magnet and the bell back and forth. And it is timed with um, the sound of the bell. Uh, so one of the features that we brought out first in our uh, Vision CC2, I believe it was, it was either that or the 21010 -10 uh, and we've carried it forward another locomotive since, and it's it's always one of the best features, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of road names, you've alluded already to some of the differences that we've been doing. Uh, we've got quite a number of, of options here uh, for you. As I mentioned, the Erie had three of these, so uh, somehow we've managed to turn that into five different SKUs of Erie locomotives. Uh, we've got the uh, as-built Matt Shea, uh, the 2603. Uh, then the 5014, uh, 5015, and 5016. Uh, you'll see the 5016 done up uh, here in the spread a little bit later um, after the Russia iron boiler went away and so forth, a little bit more of a simplified all black scheme. Uh, and then in the set that you'll see uh, later on in the show, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll have that in the, the earlier version as well. Uh, there was only one other railroad that experimented with the, the triplex style locomotive. That was the Virginian. Uh, it was a completely different uh, beast, um, but uh, we did do a sort of what-if version for that as well as some other railroads. We've got the, the Rio Grande there uh, below, you see with the green boiler. Um, and then on the next page, uh, Northern Pacific, the Virginian, we numbered our Virginian engine 701. The, the uh, original was 700, so we said, well, maybe they went back and ordered one more uh, variation that looked more like this. Uh, we also have a pilot model that comes unpainted but clear-coated. Um, a Lionel Lines version that will be available through the LCCA. Uh, I'm sure they are posting that information right now, so check out the LCCA's uh, homepage to find out details on how you can order that. Um, and then I think one of the most talked about ones and one of the really cool ones here uh, is the Halloween uh, version. And we just looked at this as we were looking at the early prototypes and said that is a face that just screams to be a Halloween locomotive. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it is an, an eerie engine after all, so. Especially with how scared I was to develop it. Yeah, uh, and so we've uh, we've taken it to the next level on the Halloween locomotive. This is the, uh, we've done some glow-in-the-dark stuff in the past, but this is a new type of glow-in-the-dark finish that we've applied to this, yeah, uh, this locomotive. It kind of has its standard paint job that you see, you know, in the light with, um, you know, mostly black, and then there's a lot of orange highlighted mm -hmm. uh, features as well. Um, very beautiful deco on the tender with Happy Halloween up by the coal bunker. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, the clear coating that, that you came up with, Ryan, to, to make this thing glow when you turn out the lights is something we've never done before and is really kind of special. Yeah, it's a really neat feature. And we can, we can get different parts of the locomotive to glow in different colors, which I think is one of the things that separates it from things we've done in the past. Yeah. So what you see here on top, all the orange domes, the roof of the cab, uh, those grow in, glow in sort of a a light green uh, sort of color. Uh, the boiler is a darker blue. The tender is a bit more of a bright blue, uh, as is the cab. Uh, but when you see it in normal lighting conditions, it looks like a, a good looking steam locomotive. Yep. Uh, and lots of great uh, decal work on this as well to bring out the rich graphics that we yep. always do on our, our Halloween locomotives. Uh, I will mention, if you're thinking Halloween and, and want a consist to go with it, it's not in the catalog now, but stay tuned in volume one. Uh, there will be a matching caboose for this, as well as some uh, passenger equipment. I know the 
not exactly what you would think of for passenger power, but we got some pretty cool uh, passenger cars coming as well. We've been doing a lot of Halloween lately, and it's been a request. So. Well, when you hear who's operating this locomotive, you'll see why there's passenger cars. That's right. And uh, the, the team here has really been doing a great job. We're still finishing up the sounds on this, but we have we are going with a whole new set of sounds uh, in this locomotive. Um, and speaking of, of who's operating it, one of the other little features about this that we shouldn't lose sight of uh, we don't have them here in the prototypes yet because we haven't done the 3D scans, but we're going to make new crew figures for yeah, these as well. Yeah. Uh, our, our tried and true uh, cab guys uh, have been uh, have seen a lot of miles over the years, and so we're, we're getting ready to upgrade and do some new uh, uh, figures for inside here. We'll be doing some 3D scans of some uh, real-life Lion-O workers. Not us. We wouldn't fit in the cab. We would not. Uh, but we've got some some better looking guys who are going to be uh, in the cab with this engine for you. So that'll be a nice new addition as well, I think. I think so, too. And, and you know, you might even see those new figures and other locomotives as well in the future. Certainly. Uh, why don't we stop talking for a little bit and let the engine speak for themselves? Uh, sure. Do we want to go over uh, wheel slip first or do we want to do Halloween sounds first? You've got the controller because you won't <laughs> let me touch it. And so I'll let you go ahead and just demo in whatever order you'd like. All right. Well, let's, let's go over to the Halloween and, and save the best for last. So. And the volume turned down, so I'll up it just a bit. Sounds like Ryan with indigestion. Definitely some fun, uh, fun sound effects. Definitely some, some fun sound effects. We've, we've, we've kicked the scary up a notch yeah. on this one. <clears throat> so what would you say? It's a demon and his minion? Something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. we also got the different bells in here. Now, first couple of bells are, are more standard, but once you get through them, you know, that's when you hear your kind of a more spooky church bell. Or a, tr a chain bell. That's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. And a crow bell. I think we crow need bell. more crow bell. <laughs> good, good reference, Ryan. Yes. And then, you know, we'll have some spooky, uh, <clears throat> spooky whistles in there also. Definitely fun sound sets going on in this mm -hmm. one. So that's cool. And then uh, we can switch on over to the Erie. Um, this one right now has more of standard crew talk in it. Uh, we still have to do the recording of all the road specific stuff. Turn one brake, We're showing 90 pounds on the rear of the train. Take out 20 for initial terminal brake test. That's a roger. 20 pound reduction given. Checking for leakage over. Roger, Sean, 20 pounds. Walk to the train. Break my out. It might be hard to tell on camera, but we have, you know, the whistle's primary in the locomotive, and it goes back into more of an echo or dobbler effect in the tender. Now, you can see the smoke effect. That's I can definitely see the smoke <laughs> effect, Dave. I can taste the smoke Get effect, it all Dave. all over into Ryan's face. Mm -hmm. um, but as you start seeing the engine move, you'll see that the tender, you know, smoke unit does go in line with the chuffing. So like I said before, completely independent uh, smoke unit on the back. 
uh, from the front locomotive. So I'll bring it to a stop and uh, now I'll show you the wheel slip. So um, there's gonna be a few different ways to trigger the wheel slip feature. Uh, the way I'm gonna show it today is by uh, using the train brake. Um, so what you do is you pull the train brake down, give it a little bit of throttle, depends on how much wheel slip you want. Um, you know, I'm gonna give it maybe a quarter throttle and then you release the train brake. And then you'll see that it comes back to the same speed as the front locomotive. Um, so if this was sitting on the rails instead of up on rollers, you know, you would see it spinning on the rails. Um, and since there's no traction tires and then you got steel wheel on steel rail, really it would take a whole lot of wheel slip to do any kind of damage to either locomotive or the track. Mm -hmm. So it's a fun feature that you really don't need to worry about um, causing any kind of chaos or damage. I'll turn the smoke off now before Ryan faints. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe demonstrate that wheel slip one more time. Sure, uh, but just to show that we also do have the wheel slip feature available even in reverse, because I'm sure the engine slipped backing up too. Pretty cool stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we could do the swinging bell too. So, Megan, if you want to show that up on the boiler. One thing that people might not know with the swinging bell um, is that the, at least on the cab two, and it will be on the cab three as well, but uh, the more you press, you know, slightly, you can actually raise and lower the bell without doing a full swing until you tap it. And then that'll give you, you know, three dings with the bell swinging. Um, other features, you know, there's just so much going on in this locomotive. You can see the other features in the brochure on uh, Lionel.com. Um, we have the, the tender marker lights, which are bicolors, for, as well as the uh, marker lights up on the front of the locomotive. So the tender is going to be the red and the white. And then um, the locomotive lights, you know, you have your green and your white. Some fun stuff there. Um, you got fully illuminated cab. It does have the flickering firebox. And it does also have the glowing ash pan. So when you're running the engine, you'll see glowing red lights coming out of the ash pan off the sides of the cab. And then when you stop, those lights do go out or they dim away. And of course, Bluetooth control and yep. four digit addressing as well. Yep. And with the with the base three, which we do have here today, I'm showing running the engines with that will have four digit control. So you'll be able to, you know, program the Erie here is 2603 or program the, the other Erie here is 3131 or any kind of four digit or three digit number you want. Or you could even call it Matt <laughs> or Shay. You probably could. <laughs> um, so lots of new features in this guy and I'm really excited to finally be able to show it to everybody after spending a lot of time and, and energy on this, this beautiful locomotive. Yeah, this has been a project for you and your team now for well, a good solid year at least. Oh, yeah. um, getting this one ready. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is ready to go. Uh, so we are taking orders and we'll be delivering this uh, earlier in 2024 than if we held off until the volume uh, volume one catalog. One other cool feature on this that I wanted to make sure we didn't overlook um, the, because this locomotive really does function as a single unit, it will be shipped as you see it here. The locomotive and tender are screwed together. Yep. You can take them apart for maintenance, but you probably don't want to. <laughs> yeah, we, we've gone back and forth whether to ship them separate or together. And we determined that because it is a little bit challenging to put them together, that it would be easier to ship them together. Because, um, you know, you have not only the draw bar that uses a, a screw to keep them together, but there's also a, a wired tether between the two units um, for things like, you know, sharing track power, um, serial communication, some other things that we, we're doing, as well as a drop plate on the locomotives mm -hmm. to, that sits on the deck of the tender. Um, so getting all that lined up yourself can be a little tricky. So we found it easier just to ship these mated. But because it's such a, a beast of a locomotive, all of your control switches are 
tucked in right underneath the coal bunker. Yeah. So really easy once you have this uh, on your track to change your settings and change your switches and so forth. Yeah, there are no nice switches at all uh, up on the engine. They are all under the coal bunker. Um, like Ryan said, it, it kind of makes it more convenient. You don't have to pick the thing up to try and flip a switch, especially when it's like a 15 pound engine. <laughs> <laughs> So one more thing to talk about before we wrap up today, you know, as we've been doing with some of our vision releases lately, uh, a big locomotive just isn't enough. We also need a ridiculously big train set to go along with it. And the set that comes, uh, that's being offered here along with the, the triplex is probably, this might be the biggest one we've ever done. It sure I mean, is a super set. It definitely is. So you've got 15 pieces of rolling stock to stretch out behind uh, this locomotive. Uh, and really, for the most part, these cars uh, in these deco schemes would be available in this set only. Um, there's a Vision stock car. There's a Vision caboose. Um, similar to the offerings we've done in recent catalogs, you'll also get um, a hobo box car. Uh, it'll have the hobo figures in there as well as the hobo sounds that we've done um, in the past. Yep. So you've got three sound equipped cars in there and then a whole host of uh, additional rolling stock. Uh, in a variety of, of cool, colorful uh, road names. These being locomotives that were built in 1914, 1916, and retired by 1933. We were kind of careful to choose rolling stock that was typical of that sort of earlier steam era period. So you've got uh, a mixture of wood and steel and um, composite cars in this set. Uh, and we also had some fun with some unique, you know, a bit of freelance tongue-in-cheek paint schemes, but fans of the Erie, I'm sure, will appreciate things like the Dunmore Company mm -hmm. uh, or the Stillwell Water Tank Car. Uh, of course, we've got the Staruka Beer uh, Reefer in there as well. Uh, and those are some really cool, unique uh, cars that will only be available uh, in this set. Uh, there will be some additional uh, three packs of the Two Bay Hoppers coming in the uh, upcoming catalog if you want to do a nice coal train behind one of these. Uh, but we give you a nice assortment of cars um, in this set with a few sound cars mixed in there to add a lot of uh, interest into it. Uh, I've been asked, will this come in one box or or, or two? I don't know yet. Uh, it, Palletized. It, it's going to be a big set. Um, and you know, a lot of value packed in there as well. Uh, so hopefully people will take advantage of, of this one. They've been very popular with the big boys and other engines we've been doing recently. Mm -hmm. And our sales team says, you know, just keep making them bigger. So I aim to please. <laughs> Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, what else? Um, what else do we have to talk about on this? Anything else you want, want to add? No, I mean, I can give a quick update. The base three, cab three. Um, base three, we currently are building up the samples over in China, uh, over at our factory. And uh, current timeline has that set at a February ship date. So um, should be most definitely be here before the triplexes are. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, the Cab 3 app will go along, you know, we'll release at the same time the base three ships. So everything's on track there. Um, any other things lately that uh, talk you about? All may have seen, we've done, I uh, did an update recently on all of the other steam locomotives from 2023 that are still yet to arrive. And those are rolling into the warehouse over the next couple of weeks. I'm sure Dave will be doing a good job of doing some updates on those as they come in. Uh, talking about some of the unique features and things as, as we go along. I'm uh, supposed to do more. Oh, yeah. They're tired of hearing me talk, Dave. Same. Uh, so we'll be doing some more of that uh, throughout the rest of this year. We've got a very busy uh, end of the year ahead uh, with lots more great things to come in 2024. Uh, so as I said, this is a Vision Locomotive will be on sale now. Uh, so please see your dealer uh, on Lionel.com to get all the information you'd like and uh, place your orders so that we can get these to you uh, out the middle of next year. Um, in between volume one and volume two, you'll have some, some more fun to look forward to. Woohoo! All right. Thank you all for joining in. We look forward to seeing you down the track a little ways. Everybody take care of yourselves. Be safe out there and have a great season. Bye.